Hello, I'm joined today by Fran Heeren from Nokia, and we're going to be talking about software as a service for the core network. So Fran, perhaps we can start off with a broad question. Why did Nokia start offering software as a service or SaaS in the first place? Okay, good to see you. Yeah, good, uh, good question. Um, and really, it's based on looking at our, our customers' needs and feedback from the customer. And ultimately, I think also an element of our industry in telecommunications catching up with the concept of on-demand or as a service. Um, and as we're looking at the acceleration of you know, 5G deployments, the emergence of 5G private wireless as a key growth area in, uh, in the market, and I think a more open approach to the investment options and how we build these networks. This is another option in addition to all of the other kind of deployment and go-to-market uh, choices that we have at Nokia. This is another option for our customers in addition to those traditional models in to deploy a core network you know based on their requirements um, and the relevant markets that they want to address and we think opens up a, a significant number of new possibilities around how we build a network how we allow testing on the networks enterprise services and ultimately new vertical markets overall okay well, let's just get a little bit of detail on how can the core network be delivered as a service i mean briefly how does it work well, I think it's important to know, first of all, that it's not an all or nothing proposition, right? There's three main elements to um, a core network. You've got your data core, your packet core. Um, there's the voice element, um, you know, for, for voice over LTE, for example, and then your subscriber data management piece as well, right? So there are your three main pillars and all of those will be available um, in the core, in the Nokia core as a service offering. But it's important to note that customers can select which elements that they want to take, uh, you know, whether it's just data, just voice, or just subscriber. And the focus right now, certainly from a market point of view, is on the data side of things. So 5G, 5G standalone core as a service being a particular driver. As I said, the voice and subscriber elements will be part of that as well. And really, it's based on what the customer's needs, immediate needs are, you know, how they evolve the network. Um, and we're launching this in conjunction with um, the global hyperscaler community. So it's very much on demand. And just to give an example, you know, we can create in our as a service offering a, a brand new core for customers inside about two hours ready for service. And it's got the, the full focus in terms of security, regulatory requirements, which is foundational to everything we do here. And I think it's also worth pointing out, and this is, you know, I think a, an interesting Kind of factor of how the industry is working today, there is a, a set number of configuration options. And for, for software as a service and for anything as a service to be successful, it's important we get the economies of scale. That tradition we have of heavily customizing deployments and networks doesn't really work in a SaaS world. So there will be options to customize and configure, but the goal here is to very much have a consistent way of deploying, rapidly deploying a core in a very, very cost efficient on demand method. Okay, so if I were in the shoes of a CSP CTO, and I think you've touched on it a little bit there, why should I choose this solution instead of a more traditional deployment? Um, there's a number of factors, I think. One is obviously time to market. I mentioned, you know, some of the, and it, it is quite radical in terms of now how quickly, you know, in conjunction with the infrastructure on demand, how quickly we can bring up a core and deliver a core to our customers. It's kind of core on demand. I mentioned that time frame of kind of two hours or less to get a core instantiated. And it's a fully resilient, fully redundant core. And it's also a, a dramatically different investment model, right? There's no heavy upfront CapEx investment that you know, we typically see when building out new networks. So the combination of those two things, on-demand, affordable, you know, limited if no upfront investment. And it also presents, I think, new options to, um, to CTOs and others in our, in our customer community um, to look at new options for how we, we do testing, how we can launch vertical services, for example, bringing up private cores for vertical applications. And this, by the way, applies both to the consumer networks, but also the enterprise networks as well. And it's very much a pay-as-you-grow model. So removing as well, the operational considerations and allowing Nokia as a partner to take on a lot more of those, I think, are all particularly important considerations for the, uh, as you said, the CTOs, but our customers in general. Okay, and from what you're saying, I think it's safe to assume that this Nokia Core SaaS offering, it will evolve in relation to standalone versus non-standalone, and even for purpose-built overlays such as IoT or 
industry 4.0? It, it will absolutely evolve. I mean, obviously, you know, the first the first iteration of this is very focused on the on the you know the the the, the key elements of a core network. Um, our first offering is going to focus on five G standalone. We'll be adding non standalone as an option um, during next year, and as I said earlier, it will support both consumer and enterprise markets. Um, and I think the consumer market, probably in terms of relevance, will be driven a lot by the geographic factors and regulatory issues but very much focused on uh, a certain type of CSPs in certain geographies where it's practical. Uh, but then also the enterprise market, we think, is a much more global market for this as well. And as I said, it can be applied to both production and non-production use cases where we can have cores now uh, instantiated very, very quickly, very cost efficiently for non-production use cases for testing and for application development as well. Okay, so do you envisage new and different types of customers in this market besides CSPs? We do. Um, I think in particularly the business we see here is going to be additive to our existing core business. I think it's going to address, uh, significantly address some markets that we don't currently um, play in today. I've mentioned the enterprise and that will be a key driver for this, particularly for us, the large scale private wireless um, sector and focusing very much on a number of key verticals uh, here at Nokia, one would be energy, utility companies, public safety, uh, and also transportation. So opening up to those markets uh, in an on-demand fashion is going to be key. And that will also be you know, directly, either go to market directly, uh, Nokia selling you know, into those customers direct, or I think particularly importantly, selling via the CSP as a sales channel for us as well. Okay, so you think then that market dynamics will change if the core SaaS becomes an industrial trend? It, it certainly will. I think the most definitely the change we'll see is on the investment side, the investment dynamic, that move from, or the option to uh, not just have heavy upfront CapEx investment as we go through these cycles, but support a much more a much smoother, more linear OPEX investment model. And I think our customers and the market in general is opening up to that, particularly as the hyperscalers, you know, enter the telecommunication space uh, with the infrastructure offerings. Um, and it also, I think, changes how we build networks in the future. Um, time to market is going to be a key factor. And I think it'll, it'll change, potentially change where companies now look to differentiate um, going forward in terms of, you know, building a dedicated, very bespoke, very specific network um, versus a lot more consistency in that space and looking to differentiate at the higher levels in terms of the applications being offered. And I think finally, it also opens up, I think, some significant opportunities in terms of continuous iteration. You know, as an industry, we talk quite a bit about things like CI, CD and DevOps and so on. Core as a service, that ability to have the core offered where it's kept up to date, it's maintained, it's, it's made relevant is going to be critical going forward. So I think it will change kind of the market perception of where differentiate needs to happen. It'll change the investment profiles and I think also change how we manage networks going forward as well. And your customers will obviously be interested in how this solution can support the creation of new services. Maybe you can just delve into that a little bit. Well, I think the um, that time to market that I talked about is is a key factor, right? Being able to to instantiate a, a new core, a complete core, um, you know, in a matter of hours and days versus weeks and months is is going to be very very important. Um, but one factor I haven't, or one thing I haven't talked about um, up until now, has been the programmability of the core. Um, so the the rich set of APIs that is going to be available and is available in, in our as a service offering. And this is going to be critical. So for all the key pillars in core, whether it's data, voice, or subscriber, um, pr pr providing a rich set of APIs to allow for application development, um, to allow for vertical market you know, applications to be um, created is going to be key. So you know, we've seen in past generations uh, you know, attempts to bring telco APIs uh, to the market and, and, and to reality. I think that's becoming a, a new focus in the industry, very much a focus on the enterprise use case in particular. So speed to market, affordability and programmability and openness, I think are the key elements here, which you know, are gonna be key in offering core as a service. Okay, and so this, is, it, is this a unique pioneering Nokia proposition or, or competitors doing something similar? 
Well, as I think this, it's very, certainly from a long-term point of view, it's not going to be unique. We're certainly pioneering this here at Nokia. Uh, you know, we did launch earlier this year the world's first full um, customer consumer uh, mobile network with, uh, with DISH in the US on hyperscaler infrastructure. Um, so we have that first mover advantage. I think we were um, the company that really moved to adopt this wide range of infrastructure early, and that's now paying off. Um, I think we need consistency in the industry, right? This challenge of ever diverging infrastructure is becoming more and more of an issue. So we see core as a service as being a real market leading way to try and bring some more consistency um, to our market. We do expect the competition to follow. I think it's fair. Um, so we will lead the way and we are leading the way in this. I think others will come into our space and not just the traditional um, suppliers our traditional competitors, but I think we'll see new entrants as well, particularly in the enterprise space in offering private wireless. But certainly at Nokia, we feel uh, you know, our as a service offering is market leading. It is the first to market at scale uh, globally as well. But in terms of staying unique, I think we can all agree that probably won't be the case, but we'll certainly be pushing to stay ahead of the competition in that respect. Well, Keith, thanks, Fran, for that insight. I mean, there's lots of things you mentioned. There's programmability, openness, quicker time to market, new services. It sounds like a fascinating market trend that you're sort of at the lead at the moment. So thank you very much, Fran. It's been great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.